Today, we are back in Final Fantasy. They've released some new Hildebrand quests, I hear. I'm a big fan of the Hildebrand quests. I love them. I'm excited. I want to see what's going on. I remember it left off. Uh, Hildebrand was like on the moon. <laughs> Rain, I have a new lead. And just as I promised, you're the first to know. Before we get into the details, though, I should give you back your soul container. Oh, you still have that. Okay. I gave it a good scrub first, of course. Being the gentleman that he is, I'm sure the inspector wouldn't want to leave any lingering spiritual odors. There, now you can listen to my findings without having distracting thoughts like, when is Nashu going to give me back my soul container? <laughs> now, as for the lead I mentioned, I was thumbing through a periodical and found an article on alien abduction. The way it was described was almost exactly what happened to the inspector. It even had a little diagram of a man swimming in midair. Anyways, the author seemed convinced that the victim had been taken to the moon. This crackpot theory sounds awful familiar. That's because it is. You remember Dorian, the editor in briefs? He was the one who wrote it. And he plans on doing research for the next edition on the moon itself. Apparently there's a portal or something in Garlemald that will take you straight there. Oh, but a world-hopping adventurer like you must have been to the moon already. Know it like a back of your hand, I bet. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, I've been there, yeah. Uh, I thought so, It it'll be nice to have an expert gu guide up. I thought so, it'll be nice to have an expert guide up there to help me search for clues. What say you? <laughs> oh man, uh, this, I like, I like this one though. To the moon, Mashu. Right, I'll start packing my bags. I don't know what the weather is like on the moon, but I remember Garlemald being a bit chilly last time I was there. To the moon! Alright. Oh, it's much, much colder than I remembered. I sure hope this lunar gate is close. It's a bit north of here. The Tower of Babel? You mean that big spiky spire? Well, we definitely shouldn't get lost on the way there. Let's get moving. I agree. She mentioned the soul container. I'd completely forgotten about it. <laughs> I didn't remember, like, anything about it, so, but, uh, I'm glad they put that little bit in there where it's like, oh, uh, where it's like, oh, so now you won't have any questions, like, when will she give me back my soul container? Because if I had remembered that, uh, I would have 100% been like, alright, well, can I get that back, please? I, I do, I do want that back. <laughs> I wonder where we keep the soul container. It would be nice if we had like a little, uh, like we have the codex, right? Uh, I think that's a thing somewhere. It'd be nice if we had, uh, if it was just like a stored with the codex or something, so you can go and look at it and like read a little description about it, even though you should probably already know about it. So uh, this thing will send us up to the moon just like that. Courage, Nashu. The world is in grave danger, and the people deserve to know. I have to reach the moon so I can expose the truth. As I have explained to you twice already, I can only allow passage to authorized travelers, which you are not. Ah, you're with them, aren't you? The aliens have infiltrated every layer of our society. What in blazes are you talking about? I'm Dalmassian, born and raised. Oh, look, it's Dorian, the editor in briefs. That's Delian, editor in chief, thank you very much. And you are friends of the abducted, I believe? Rain, greetings. Are you acquainted with this man by any chance? No. <laughs> no, nor am I affiliated with him in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. He doesn't seem like the kind of company a hero like you would keep. But Rain, aren't you forgetting that whole conversation we had with Dorian back in Razzathan? No, I don't remember anything of the sort. Rain, as in Rain Thyme, Slayer of Gods, Savior of Ishgard, Liberator of the Providences, Stealer of Pants? I don't remember that last one. Uh, did I do that? I feel like, uh, even if I did, I deny it. Uh, how did I fail to recognize such an unbelievably famous individual? 
As a champion of the people, you have a duty to lend us through this fast strangling checkpoint. We cannot let your comrade's abduction go unsolved. He needs you, and the world needs my next article. And did you believe he was taken to the moon? Well, that certainly sounds like an emergency to me. Your acquaintance here seems sincere in his desire to help, so I will grant him special dispensation to accompany you just this once. You may proceed to the nether gate. Damn, so he's coming with us, huh? Mysterious forces have thrust us together, and though I trust the fates about as much as I trust that obviously composed gate guard, I will leave no moonstone unturned. The truth is up there. I wonder what he's going to think of the Loperets. Back on the moon. Oh, the moon is just as white and shiny up close, but not made of cheese. And no sign of Inspector Hildebrand, either. So, we've already arrived? The Empire's technology is more advanced than I feared. Well, not quite the Empire's. <laughs> Over there, the aliens have built some kind of forward base on the lunar surface. We must sneak in and blow the lid on their invasion plans. Looks like Dorian has a lead. Come on, we should follow him. Hey, how's it going? Aliens! Honest to God's aliens! I never expected them to be so tall, or so small and bunny-like. Welcome. If I had known I was receiving so many visitors, I would have sent for more tea. That voice, speaking inside my head. I don't know the words, but their meaning is clear. Are... are they wielding psychic powers to try and brainwash me? You alright there, friend? Need help with anything in particular? And this one speaks our tongue fluently. Learned it from your Charlene collaborators, I'll wager. Don't think you'll fool me. What with your adorable bunny nose and silken ears, I'll print the truth before you arrive to beguile my fellow men. <laughs> You're one of Urianje's friends, aren't you? I'm not sure who or what put such odd ideas into your companion's head, but would you mind setting him straight for me? Loperets are allies of all mankind, misguided attempts to make us live off carrots alone, not this fan thing. I'm gonna go with the second one. <gasps> They got to you, didn't they? <laughs> I don't suppose I should be surprised. I've heard the rumors about the disbanded Scions of the Seventh Dawn. The formerly secret society has in truth become all the more secret that it may pull our leader's strings from the shadows. Hold it right there, mister. I won't stand here and listen to you slander Rain or is this lovely bunny any longer. You better not label them, neither. We actually came in search of Inspector Hildebrand. A dashing gentleman who we think was brought here by a shiny flying saucer. You wouldn't happen to have seen either of them around here, would you? I'm afraid I have seen neither. Long was it my duty to keep watch. But as the need for constant vigilance has since ended, I have grown accustomed to idleness. It's rather refreshing, really. Anyways, perhaps the Loperets may have observed this man or his abductor. Hmm... I would have remembered if I had. The others might have seen something, though. Why don't I take you over to Bestway's burrow, and you can ask them about it yourself. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Please lead the way. If nothing else, getting an eyeful of the facilities we built for the benefit of mankind should help reassure your suspicious friend here. Good gods. <laughs> so... Many bunnies. If they had, if they can build a forward base on this scale, then what hope does mankind have against them? Oh, for the love of carrots! This is not a military operation. Do you see any cannons or assault craft? We haven't any weaponry at all. Take your time and chat with whomever you like. As for me, I've got perfectly innocuous and not at all nefarious things to do. Bye now. Right then, let's get on with the investigation. Nashu and Delian are now accompanying you. Keep them at your side in order to proceed with the quest objectives. An Aetherite, a convenient tool for meeting with their Charlian co-conspirators, no doubt. 
Oh, they'll tell you aetherites were an elegant invention, but it was really just one of many alien technological secrets received in exchange for their undying loyalty. Link Pearls, too. Be careful what you say on those private calls. The Charlians are always listening. Look, they even have an aetherite here. Oh, I often stretch my legs out there under the stars, but I can't say I've noticed anything out of the ordinary. Sorry. Not to worry. We'll try our luck elsewhere. Thank you. Furry-faced liars, the lot of them. They're probably hiding an entire fleet of alien attack craft. I'm taking notes on everything in this base. Floor plans, personnel, abstract tree structures. My next issue will expose their entire operation. I don't think we've seen this yet. A propulsion engine? Of course, this is no mere moon. You know the satellite up upon which we stand was never a natural celestial body, right? It was a grand fabrication of the ancients. They were in contact with aliens even back then, but the purpose of their ambitious construction has eluded us. Until now, it's obvious that the moon is a colossal star-faring vessel. I think it's funny how he, like, he almost gets it. Core, that's a big fan. It must get hot in here. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's why it's there. <laughs> Oh, ever since we built the Excitatron 6000, we get all kinds of people around here. Could you describe your missing friend in a bit more detail? Well, he's very gentlemanly and dapper, if you look past the almost certainly tattered state of his clothing. Hmm. Though their fashion sense can be a bit... I've never seen this word before. Eclectic. Hmm. Though their fashion sense can be a bit eclectic, our visiting adventurers are always dressed impeccably. Not to be rude, but I have a feeling your friend would have stood out in that crowd. He's probably strapped to a table somewhere, even as we speak, enduring unspeakable experiments. <sighs> From what I've pieced together so far, the giant alien is the master, and all these smaller xenobunnies are an artificial life forms created to serve as minions in his armies. Their harmless appearance is part of the strategy. As soon as you let your guard down, snap! They take you down like a pack of tiny herbivorous wolves. Dorian has some interesting theories, doesn't he? Being nibbled to death by a mob of cuddly bunnies doesn't sound like a bad way to go. No gentleman in ragged clothes, I'm afraid. But I did spot an object in a flight that I couldn't immediately identify. Well, it was, it was while I was out gathering materials in the south of Mare Latorium. I presumed it was one of... I presumed it was just some elegant relic, or new species of floating jellyfish, and didn't think too much of it. Cora, now that sounds promising. Thank you for your time. What's this, then? A pod for growing new Xenobuddies? They must plan to produce them in the millions and overwhelm us with the sheer fuzzy numbers. Ah, how could I have been so blind? Those aren't ears. They're psychic wave generators. They lure people close with their precious little faces, and then BAM! Brainwashed. I figured it all out, alien scum. And once the world reads my special edition, your dreams of domination will be done for. HA! What a strange and oddly aggravating man. Is he a friend of yours, too? He thinks he's a friend to the people, but I don't think any people are his friends. <laughs> Damn. Right, let's get out of here and find that flying object. Do you know which direction is south? Wait, I'm coming with you. Don't leave me alone with the brainwashing Xenobunnies. Search for the flying object. Okay. Da 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 Nashu is romping around with Argos, already forgetting why she was out here. How is Argos? Seems like he's been doing well. Dillian is searching high and low for any sign of alien vessels, like a true professional. Alright. Let's see, what else? Ah. 
There, there he is. Let me see if there's anything else first before I go on and do that. Um, yeah, let's, okay, I don't think there's anything else. Yeah, I think, okay, I got him. Just barely. Ah, there it is. And there it goes. Come on, we can't let it get away. There he is. We did it, Rain. We found the inspector. Case closed. Horrendous. Only aliens could subject a man to such a callous and physically implausible fate. What? <laughs> huh? Um, are my eyes playing tricks on me? Or do you see a whole field of planted Hildebrands? <laughs> Hildebrand, Inspector and Extraordinaire. Well, well, what a delightful surprise to see you here, wherever here happens to be. My, what an impressive specimen of a gentleman you are, good sir. The same could be said of you, my good man. Is this an extemporaneous gentleman's club? If I may be so bold as to join you? What in the name of the occult is happening here? Where did they all come from? They're phantom Hildebrands created by the refraction of starlight through swamp gas. Could be their Hildebrand clones grown in an alien laboratory's flesh vats. Let's go with the second one and rile the guy up a bit. Imposters, you mean? Don't worry, I know just how to find the real inspector. Here he comes. Hey. <laughs> Cease and assist, Nashu. Use your powers of deduction, not destruction. Hmm, they're all so authentic and synchronized. I honestly can't tell the difference. Uh. <laughs> Well, look no further, for I am the one and only Hildebrand, agent of inquiry and inspector extraordinaire. The one and only? I believe that would be me, good sir. How odd, I think you will find that I am the original Hildebrand. Oh? I am more than certain that I am Hildebrand. As am I. Could it be that we are all Hildebrand? How positively marvelous! I propose we celebrate this auspicious moment as only a mob of Manderville men can. What manner of waking nightmare is this?
Oh no. <laughs> what? There he is, the real Hildebrand. Apologies for the confusion, my friends. I assure you that this time you stand in the presence of the inimitable Hildebrand Hiliodor Maximilian Manderville. And this diminutive blue chap here is my new associate, Master Pufu. Another alien species! <gasps> of course! You're building a clone army to invade our star, and what we stumbled upon was a field test. I do not believe we've had the pleasure, my excitable fellow, but I promise you that the amicable Master Pufu was, has no desire to wage any clone wars. Then, what's all this about? Are you telling me you weren't abducted? A simple misunderstanding. Oh, flashback. Ho ho ho, what a charming little rascal you are. An offshoot of the Mandragora family, perchance. Ah, I see. Please make your acquaintance, Master Fufu. Ahem. Might I inquire as to our current whereabouts? I had but recently reunited with Nashu and Rain, and would greatly appreciate it if you could convey me back to my prior location. Splendid. Full speed ahead, my dear fellow. Steady on now. This is not what I had in mind. My word, you've generated a veritable battalion of identical gentlemen. Surely the world could never safely contain so much pure Mandevillian magnificence. Could you perchance reverse the process? <laughs> it's like a horror movie. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh, one got away. Oh, gods, no. Not like that. Mummy! Thus, I have concluded that Master Pufu has no grasp of the common tongue and his true intentions, while surely peaceable, remain woefully unclear. 
It was only through frenzied gestures that I managed to direct him back here and have him clean up our Mandeville multiplicity incident. Foo foo, I hail, foo foo foo, from a star, foo foo, a great distance from here. Foo foo, I came in search of a friend whose communications halted mid exploration. All this way to aid a comrade in distress, you say? The devotion, the determination, your touching story has sunk its hooks into my heart. Fear not, my blue-hued friend, for I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, have attached myself to this case like a stubborn barnacle on a kraken's behind. I swear to you, here and now, I shall scour all of creation, from the deepest pit of the seven hells to the very pinnacle of the heavens, for the missing comrade that you so desperately seek. What did we say? <laughs> uh, I'm glad you are here to help ward off any more misunderstandings. Mr. Fufu's eyes make me feel dizzy, like swirls that go around and round and round and round. An entirely new species of alien. The next issue of Truth will need to be a special double edition. Tell me, Rain, how is it that you're able to understand Master Fufu's language? The echo. The power of echoes. Ah, you mean persistent repetition. It sounds familiar to the Mandarin art of parlay. You're saying that you have an extrasensory ability that allows communications with aliens? How fascinating. Yes, most fascinating indeed. Pending mysteries aside, I am glad indeed to once more be in the company of my faithful assistant and stalwart contemporary both. The Imperfect Gentleman. So begins the case of the silent correspondent. Uh, not stopping to rain on your parade, but my friend who is somewhere on your star stopped sending me messages is not a lot to go on. I spent years investigating the existence of aliens, and recent experiences notwithstanding, they are not that easy to find. Then you don't know Inspector Hildebrand. He'll solve this case as he's solved countless others with unerring perception and panache. Ah, ha ha ha. Well said, Nashu. I need but relinquish conscious thought to investigative instinct, and the clues will follow to me forthwith. Lose yourself in the deductive current, Inspector. <gasps> You're channeling, aren't you? Contacting a higher power to breach the veil of mystery. Another fascinating development. Ah, there you are. I've been looking all over. Thought you'd like to know that I spotted the chap you were asking about. You know, the well-muscled gentleman with tattered clothing and dazzling teeth. You mean this gentleman? We found him too. So this is the one that got away. Well, that can't be right. I just saw him in the north of Merlatorium, and he ran the other way when I called out. I don't understand how he could have arrived before me. I have a feeling, Mr. Bunny, sir, that what you saw was an imposter. Rain, would you mind asking Mr. F Fufu if he was growing any more inspectors on the moon? There was that one that ran. I only created a single batch, but one did manage to escape the vaporization beam. Killed them. That individual's behavior was unpredictable. A flaw in the cloning process, I'm afraid. Well, this won't do at all. We cannot have a flawed inspector running around besmirching the Manderville name. Master Fufu, I ask that we hunt down and liquidate my other self as soon as possible. Might we delay the search for your comrade until the deed is done? 
Fufu, my, the imperfect clone was of my making. It is only right that I redress my mistake first. So begins the case of the imposter inspector. Oh, that does sound exciting. If you don't mind me coming along, I can show you the place where I saw the imposter inspector. I wonder what other nefarious abilities this so-called amicable alien is hiding. My ship's matter duplication facility is prone to the occasional glitch. I should probably have that looked at. It was right around here. I spy with my little eye. No dashingly defective gentleman. He can't have made it that far on foot. Why don't we try searching the immediate area? Scan the horizon, that kind of thing. Then I suggest we split up so we can cover more ground. Nashu, Rain, and I will investigate to the northwest. Right, and I'll take these other two and head northeast. Splitting the party again, and you're leaving me with the aliens? Oh, relax, Bright Eyes. We'll have a nice chat and I can disabuse you of all those strange conspiratorial notions. Oh, and we can get to know our new friend here. Let us be on our way as well, with rain in the van, if you please. The Cradle of Darkness. Behold, this sublime vista, tis as the moon herself breathes beneath our feet. Oh, look down there, they have their very own hot spring. My dear Nashu, what you are observing is no hot spring, but a natural reservoir of cerulean. With such a rich resource to hand, it is no wonder they can afford these palladial residences. It's no wonder they can afford these palladial residences. I'm so glad you're here to educate me, Inspector. I was about to take a quick soap. Being on the moon reminds me of that time I was blasted all the way to Dalamun. I do believe that was a personal best in terms of distance flung. Oh man, I bet he, oh, I bet he had like some quests back in 1.0. I'm so sad I missed those. Oh man, if I, if I was alive, uh, I mean, I was alive, but I mean, if I was there back at 1.0, I would have loved to go through all the quests and stuff. Especially had I known how big this uh, game would have become. It would have been so much fun to like go through and like see all the stories that people can't see anymore. But I understand that the game is it was bad. It was really bad and should not exist. But I do miss the stories that were lost. When you're up in the sky, our world's a pizza pie, oh so pretty. A goldsmithing hammer is lodged in the thinker's carcass. It appears to have been dealt a single swift killing blow. Core, the bugs grow big up here, don't they? The, this hammer, surely it cannot be. Nay, it does not bear thinking about. Come along, nothing to see here. You don't think it's his father, do you? Wouldn't that be an interesting turn of events? I wouldn't mind seeing Mr. Manderville himself. What a dazzling display of stars. Not a single cloud in sight. In fact, I've never seen the night sky so clearly. Now that you mention it, it's been nighttime the entire time I've been here. How much longer till dawn breaks, do you think? Huh. Another goldsmithing hammer. Another killing blow that bespeaks unparalleled strength. Ah, it looks like he's yawning. The hammer stuck in his head spoils the effect, though. He cannot be here. Why would he be here? That's a goldsmithing tool, isn't it? It does look awfully familiar. And... And y yet completely unrelated to our case. Uh, moving on, people, moving on. It couldn't be. The Manderville man himself. Trail of fancy footprints. A set of gentlemanly tracks leads to the northwest. Aha! In the sand, in the snow, or in a half elm of moon dust, I'd recognize those fancy footprints anywhere. They're a perfect copy of mine. Our fugitive imposter must be just up ahead. I sense a gentlemanly presence. He is close, very close.
no clones in the northeastern quadrant that we could see. That's clever. Mr. Fufu can scout for us from the air. Aha! I found me! There he is. Killed the clone. Why? Why did I flee? He seems sad, downcast, very uninspector like. A flawed creation, to be sure. Such negative emotions would never mar the heart of a true Manderville man. It couldn't be. Could it? There he is, Mr. Manderville himself. <laughs> Praise Thal for his patience. To what seem my beloved Hildy has been awoken from his unnatural slumber. Missed. <laughs> Abandoning my gentlemen comrades to save myself, my pride in worse tatters than my maltreated wardrobe. My fatherly love? Denied? Unthinkable. Unless... That is not my son. There he goes. God, I love these chase scenes. Another of me survived? I'll not turn tail and run this time, no sir. Hildebrand to the rescue. Round and round as fast as I can. I can't slow down. I'm a Manderville man. 
Manderville Dance of the Ephemeral Twins. <laughs> Multi ball. What? <laughs> I must say, I'm a little confused. Now I know I'm dreaming. That can't possibly be real. <laughs> ah, that was a little something we prepared to welcome the people of Atheris. I almost forgot it was still there. The barrage appears to have stopped, but just look at all this junk. Please, everyone, be sure to pick up your litter before you leave. The moon belongs to everyone, you know. Oh? What's that? Ho ho. Oh no. Hildebrand Heliodor Maximilian Manderville, how glad am I to see you up and about. Your mother will be beside herself with joy. I only stand before you now thanks to Nashu, who stood ever vigilant at my bedside, and to Rain, who ferried my soul back from across the rift. My son is indeed blessed with comrades of quality. You have my heartfelt gratitude. To you, Master Fufu, I extend my apologies. In my excitement, I fear I have broken your starship. If there is aught I can do to help effect repairs, you have only to ask. My vessel experienced a temporary malfunction, but there was no major structural damage. It brings me relief and joy to hear it. Ahem, might I have a word, Rain? I had actually come to the moon in search of a certain rare ore, and by Thal's good graces my quest has been successful. The ore, however, is but the first step of a longer saga. Meet me back in Ronstadt Han, and I will explain the role I wish you to play. Yes, I think it's best we make the journey starwards. We'll not find Master Fufu's friend up here unless someone packed an extremely officious spyglass. Anybody? 
No? Then home it is. For years, I've chased after the supernatural and the inexplicable, but to encounter so much of it in such a short span of time, my mind still reels from the implications. Yet I must keep my gaze focused beyond the veil. A chance like this comes only once in a lifetime. Ah, how lovely to be back on the star of my birth. Father did not tarry to chat, but said something about returning here with a trusted employee. Well, we've no time for further familial pleasantries. Nashu and I must devote our, all our mental energies to the case of the silent correspondent. My keen inspector's sense impels me to begin our search in that direction. Make haste, my companions, for justice waits for no man, not even one who is little and blue. Inspector, wait. Can't justice make an exception for me? His channeling appears to be remarkably effective. Fascinating. Yes, most fascinating indeed. Rain, forgive me, I seem to have been laboring under a misconception. After spending some time with the Xenobunnies, it has become clear to me that they have not the slightest intention of invading our star. They are no threat to us. That's good. But he is! You know of whom I speak. The devious master Fufu and his diabolical devices devised solely for world domination. I shall have to investigate him further to learn the intricacies of his plans but I may require your aid, not to mention your interpretation. I'll even pay you a retainer fee, so please, when the time comes, join me on my quest for the truth. Hey, how's it going? Ah, Rain, my apologies for the wait. Shall we proceed to business, then? The task at hand concerns nothing less than a family legacy. The recreation of the historically significant and astronomically magnificent Manderville weapons. They were the designs of a distant ancestor, you see. While the originals have long since vanished, the manual containing the secrets of their construction survives, a precious heirloom passed down through generations of Mandervilles. Why the sudden passion for weaponsmithing? Aren't your hammers built for hammering gold? Tis true that, as a goldsmith, I've had little occasion for crafting implements of war. Why this project, and why now, you may very well ask. Then I shall very well tell you. The tale begins not so long ago. I was here in Razat Han to discuss a deal with an up-and-coming merchant. The, latter, the matter in question was an acquisition proposal. Alas, the talk soured, so I made preparations to depart. It was then that the sky burst into flame. You know all too well what horrors followed. I did my best to defend the citizenry from the beasts which spawned, yet I could not save them all. Saved far too few, in fact. The memory of it haunted me day and night, and I found myself unable to work. But then I heard the news of how you and your companions had ventured forth to banish this evil at its source. You forged on in the face of deepest despair, and it gave me the courage to do the same. I took a good, hard look in the looking glass, and asked, what can Godbert Manderville do to safeguard the people of this star? Thus did I realize that I had both the knowledge and the skill to forge the greatest of weapons, that I might empower others to protect themselves and their fellow man. So I began going down the list, acquiring the necessary materials with single-minded purpose. One of these was a goodly chunk of purest mandurium ore, a metal found exclusively in meteorites, and that only rarely. I searched high and low, scouring impact sites and consorting with kobolds, all to no avail. Then, when none was found to be on Heidelin, I set my sights on the moon, where I at last obtained a sizable sample. 
Now I say at last, but the list of materials goes on. If I am to collect the rest in a timely fashion, I must employ the help of a comrade of quality. When you can spare a moment from adventuring or aiding my dear son in his inspecting, pray drop a word in the ear of my manservant here. I shall clear my schedule of trivial interruptions, and we can proceed with the recreation of a Manderville weapon forthwith. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Rodstadhan, Oh. Sound the alarm. A prisoner is escaping. It was so stealthy getting in. <laughs> Not so much on the way out. Oh man, that was fun. Alright. Well, that concludes the Manderville quest. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this has been a really fun quest line. Uh, I, I really love the Hildebrand stuff. I always have. And um, I hope they continue to do more of it. It's one of my favorite quest lines uh, in the game. Uh, well, besides the main quest, right? But yeah, it's, it's a ton of fun, always. I know some people it's not their thing, but for me, I absolutely love it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.